What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about grids in Revit. So grids are a really important tool and a really important part of uh, any project, and I think that in Revit a lot of users know how to place grids, but they don't really know much about the uh, additional functionality that's uh, inside of this tool. So I decided to create a video where I can kind of start off with a complete novice level where I show you how to place grids, but then go all the way past intermediate into advanced where I show you all of the additional functionality and settings that we have when it comes to placing uh, grids in Revit. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Uh, now before we get into the actual tutorial, I would just like to ask you to like this video, it helps me out a lot with YouTube algorithm, and also make sure to subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials, and also I have some courses. I have both beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses for Revit. They're all available on my website balkanarctic.com. The link is in the description just below the video. So check it out if you're interested. I've got over 90 hours of video content there. And also if you would like to get my Revit project files, those are available on my Patreon page and that is going to be the second link in the description. Uh, now for this project I'm going to be using a uh, just a just a file from my website from the uh, from the architecture design template a house that uh, that they have modeled uh, for that template for a little presentation that's uh, it's a one hour and twenty minute presentation that's included in that uh, template so if you're interested in that that's also available in the description okay so without any further ado let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. This is that project that I was talking about that's included in that template. And let us now head over to the floor plan view in order to start placing some grids. Obviously in 3D views you cannot place grids, but if you navigate to one of the floor plans like the level one floor plan that we have over here, uh, obviously here we can place some grids. So grids, you can only place them in floor plans, uh, elevation views, section views, uh, in uh, ceiling plans and so on, but you cannot uh, place them in 3D views. Okay, so now to place a grid, you have to start the grid command. Uh, you can either find it here on the architecture tab. On the datum panel, you have the grid. And keep in mind that the datum panel will not only appear on the architecture tab, but also the structure tab. Uh, and then, yeah, I think it's just those two. Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, only on these two. Uh, now here on the datum panel, we can go to the grid tool. GR is the shortcut, so you can use that as well. I'm just going to click and there we go. Uh, now for grids, uh, you can uh, use some different draw tools here that we have. As you can see, we have the line tool, we have the arc tool, uh, a couple of arc tools, and then we also have the pick lines. And also we have the multi-segment uh, grid, but uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, later on. Okay, so now to place the grid, uh, you just come over uh, to the some part of the model where you want to place that grid. For example, I want to place a grid running through the center of this exterior wall. And as you can see, we get that little kind of uh, uh, just a, a little navigation line to help us kind of pinpoint that wall center line and I can click and the first click will not have that bubble but as you can see the second click will and when you just extend this line you can see that it's going to kind of snap into position uh, when it's vertical also when it's at a 45 degree angle again we get that dashed blue line and it kind of snaps into that position and the same thing goes for horizontal so you can just uh, place it uh, like this. Uh, and let's hit the escape key a couple of times. Uh, now here you may notice that this is grid number three and that's because I have already placed a couple of grids before and deleted them. So then it ha went over to grid number three. Uh, but if I just click here in this bubble and type in grid number one, uh, the next time I want to create a new grid and let's go then to the kind of the perhaps to this part here. Let's say that this wall is where the second grid should be. If I place another grid there, as you can see, it's going to say grid number two. And also something that you'll notice is that it's going to snap here into position at this point. So now these two are connected. So if I select any of one of these grids, because I have started from the same point and kind of snapped it to the same point uh, below, if I move this grid by uh, just dragging this 
circular uh, kind of button here and just dragging it down as you can see the other segment will move as well so we do have that option same thing goes here if i move this one the other one will follow uh, now uh, as i said the bubble will only appear on the uh, on the second grid so or, or will only appear on the second click uh, now you can change that and if I just select one of these grids and go here into edit type uh, you can notice that here uh, in the type properties just like on uh, any other family we have some uh, parameters here and then here you can see that we have the plan view symbol and one and end two so the end one is the first click and then the end two is the second click so uh, it's only checked on end two but if I decide to check it on end one and hit apply now we're going to have these both on top and bottom and uh, this is something that can be really useful if you have a large floor plan uh, it's really useful to have these bubbles on both sides uh, now moving forward let's uh, place a couple of these a couple more uh, so here if I go to grid again and let's place it here and let's say you accidentally place it at an angle so as you can see here you can change the angle just by moving your mouse but let's say you move it to a wrong angle like this and then hit the escape key a couple of times so now if i were to get this little grip point and if i were to kind of try to straighten it out it's not going to work we can extend it and we can shorten it but we cannot change the angle so the only way to change the angle well we have a couple of ways either to use the rotate tool uh, but in a lot of cases uh, such as this one that's probably not the all uh, the kind of the uh, the best solution so what i prefer to do is to go here on the modify tab we have the align tool and then use the align tool to kind of align it like this with the center axis there and then i just like to make sure that it's locked here on top as you can see it's kind of locked to all of the other ones and we have that little lock so if i unlock that this one will move independently but if i now lock it back in place now they all move together and here on the bottom it seems to be disconnected so again let's snap it and now it's locked oops and now if we decide to move it there we go uh, and finally uh, let's copy it to the to this one here so you can even copy these so you can go here to copy copy it can there to the center line if you miss it again align tool and you can align it in place uh, now uh, once you've done the the vertical ones when you go to do the horizontal ones and let's go here to grid and if we just find this line just like that you can change the uh, the naming convention simply by clicking here into the number and changing it or you can just select it and change the number here under name uh, in the identity data in the properties panel so if I just type in a here it's going to change into a and then when I place another one perhaps over here and just like that it's going to be the grid line B so just keep that in mind you can change the naming convention and then Revit will pick it up and use it afterwards uh, let's bring this down a little bit closer here and then closer here uh, also something to keep in mind is uh, when we select these as you can see these are orange uh, now uh, obviously uh, this is something that's uh, kind of different and special this is something that's included in my uh, uh, template in the architecture design template so these are set to be orange uh, you Usually they're black so if I go here into edit type here as you can see the uh, uh, the end segment color has been changed to uh, orange and I prefer to have a lighter color for all of my annotation and kind of uh, lets the uh, the floor plan kind of pop out and then the annotation is kind of in the background I that's just the, the way that I prefer to to work uh, anyways uh, moving forward here you can see that we have our uh, a, a few more parameters that I would like to cover. Uh, now, the first one here, uh, or the, the the kind of the most important one, is the center uh, segment. So, uh, what that is referring to is here. Uh, this goes all the way through the model or through the floor plan. But in some cases, you're going to want to split those. So you can change this from continuous into none, and then hit apply and click OK. And now, as you can see, it's just going to break those here so they don't actually go through the floor plan they kind of stop mid-air uh, now if I just select one of these and go back into edit type you actually get this end segment length which is a parameter you can change uh, by default it's set to 2.5 but if I change that to something like 5 and then hit apply 
as you can see now it's going to extend these five centimeters so keep in mind that it does correspond to scale so if I change this to 1 to 50 it's going to shorten so uh, it is something to keep in mind but as you can see now these extend a bit longer so you can play around with that parameter and then also you have the custom parameter uh, which if I just hit apply and click OK now as you can see we get that black dashed line in the middle so it uh, basically allows you to play around and let me select this again it allows you to play around with that center segment so uh, for example if I shorten this back to I don't know two and hit apply there we go so we can have that center segment maybe be in uh, just the bright or very light gray and then if I hit apply so it doesn't kind of intrude too much on the floor plan but it's still there if you just want to kind of figure out where the center line is or where the grid line is so it can be really useful I prefer not to use it but feel free to to use it if you want so I like to keep it at continuous and just hit apply uh, now also uh, let me go back here to none uh, here, when you break it like this, one problem that that might create is the fact that it doesn't only uh, correspond to the uh, to the floor plans like this, but also to the uh, uh, to the, the the vertical plans. So if I go here to the elevation view, perhaps the south elevation, as you can see, it's still going to break those vertically, which is usually not something that you want to have. Uh, usually, people don't uh, don't like this. As, at least personally, I don't like that. Uh, but it is still something that uh, that happens. So just keep that in mind. So we cannot control that break uh, for uh, differently for horizontal and vertical plans. But if I select this, go here into Edit Type, you can see that here on the bottom we don't really have those bubbles. So we actually have the option to set the bubbles for non-plan views and for plan views. Uh, but we don't have the ability to set the break. Uh, or the center segment for non-plan views and plan views. Why is it like that? I don't know. But here, as you can see, we can set this to be both top and bottom. And now we'll, we're going to have that bubble both on top and bottom, even in these non-plan or vertical views. So that's just something to consider uh, when it comes to uh, working with these. Uh, now, one more thing that's really important is the break. So here you can break these can add a little elbow and then you can kind of move it out of the way if it's in the way of something perhaps when these are way close together if we didn't have that break it would kind of probably look like that and that's overlapping and you don't want that so you do have the ability to break it like this add that little elbow and then move it off to the side uh, now this can look really nice but that uh, the problem that this presents is the fact that then you would probably have to change this on each of you so if I were to go here to level 2 it doesn't have that so one way to skip that part where you would make this elbow on each level is to go here to propagate extents it's on the modify tab and if you click there you can basically select which view you want to apply this little change to so if I just go here to floor plan level 2 click OK now if I just open up level 2 we have that change that has been applied to level 2 which I, I find really really useful when it comes to working with these uh, with these grid lines and then we can probably bring it back into its original position and bring it in like this uh, and yeah uh, finally I said here I'm going to work with multi segments so this allows you to basically draw your uh, your grid line so if you want to have some weird looking grid line you can do that so you can go perhaps from here and it's going to go into draw mode so you can go like this and as you can see it gets that little purple rabbit uh, line so you can create something that looks like that maybe snap it into position extend it here here maybe it can follow the center line of this wall and like that and then you can hit finish and there you go we have this odd looking a uh, grid line that kind of goes into an odd shape and it still has that break on both uh, both uh, uh, angles here or uh, both curves here because well it has that break so you do have the ability to play around with that you can edit that sketch you can change it if you want you can maybe change it I don't know like that trim and extend so you can create some really weird looking uh, grid lines if that's necessary for your project uh, in most cases you're probably going to be working just with straight grid lines uh, such as these that we have 
uh, on our project. So there we go. That's everything you need to know about creating grid lines in Revit. They are really useful. Uh, they can host the columns uh, and, and so on. So if you want to place a column, you have the ability to place it at grid intersections and so on. So they do have a lot of useful functionality. Uh, they keep your floor plans in order and they help you work and take the construction part into the consideration when uh, working on the layout. So I think that these are really useful and that's how to place them. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want a complete beginner to intermediate level course, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. If you get it today, uh, you're going to get the template and the little course that shows you how to build this uh, house as well for free. So that's a $40 additional value for free. Or of course, you can get the template if you're interested as well. You can get it uh, as a separately if you don't want that beginner course or if you want to get the course as part of the subscription package. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Make sure to subscribe, like and share this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.